now that we've defined the loss function and we've also defined the model structure, how you go from inputs to outputs, we can turn to optimization in the skipgram model, which is basically trying to get the loss function um, that might look like this to a, a lower value. And we're going to fiddle with the parameters inside the model. We're basically going to wiggle the parameters inside the structure of the model in order to get down here. And the way we're going to do that is to uh, use the approach called the gradient descent. If you haven't come across this, but I'm almost sure you have, but if you haven't, then um, please have a look at my gradient descent video, which just introduces this. But at a basic level, what you're going to do is you're going to start at some point for your different parameters, which in this case are these V and these U vectors. And um, then we're going to say, well, okay, if I've, if I've started there, what direction should I move this particular parameter in, in order to get the loss lower? The gradient descent idea is to take the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to the parameter that you're currently looking at. You figure out these partial derivatives and then you move in negative of that direction. So in this very simple like one dimensional case here, if I calculate the derivatives at this point, then it would be a line like this, which has a negative slope. So you have a negative negative, which means you'll move in the positive direction, which means you'll change the parameters in this way. So maybe you end up there. Then again, you move in the positive direction and dunk, 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 until you get to hopefully the bottom of your loss function. And you're going to do that for each of the parameter vectors in your model, which for skipgram is a whole set of V vectors for your center words and a whole set of U vectors for your context words. Okay, now to do this, we need the gradients with respect to the loss function. We've defined the loss function already, and it looks like this. And we need the gradients of this loss function, the partial derivatives, with respect to each of the vectors in my set of parameters. Just as a brief reminder, um, the loss function is based on really this probability, which which according to the model structure tells you how probable am I in seeing this particular context word given that I have this center word. And that probability is given according to the structure of the skipgram model. And based on that, we can, well, I can spoil it for you. We're basically going to substitute that structure into um, the probability here. And then we're going to take the partial derivatives of j, the loss function, with respect to the different parameters in our model structure. So let's do that by just looking at one input-output example um, in our loss function, basically just looking at one of these negative log likelihood terms for one pair of center word with a corresponding context word. Then we can use this abbreviated form which says, well, for this specific center word with this context word, we have this negative log um, of this, which is exactly that, okay? And that log, uh, this probability would depend on the parameters of the model, the u's and the v's. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute in basically the structure of the model telling us how to get that um, probability. And if you flip back uh, a few slides or videos, um, then you're going to, you can just recall that the probability of seeing a particular context word um, with a particular center word, you basically take the dot product of the context word with the center word embedding, you take the exponential of that, and then you sum that up by normalizing over the entire vocabulary. And that's just the softmax function, little k, um, going from one to capital V, the size of the vocabulary, and you take the dot product with your center word um, embedding. Okay, now if you remember um, your grade one mathematics, um, the log of a fraction, you can uh, take the log of that minus the log of that. So you end up with minus the log of, let's put the minus there, e to the, the dot product between v, c, minus um, the log of the sum from little k equal to 1, v, and then the dot product with all the other words, also including the current um, context word, 
okay? Um, now the cool thing is the log, and if I write log, it's normally base um, E. The log of E of something, that is actually just the something, okay? So you end up with an equation here looking like this. You've got minus, and then you've got achwortel. You've got the dot product between your context word and your center word minus and then the log of this monstrosity that we have here. And um, if you flip a little bit back, uh, you probably use the log some X trick maybe here um, to figure out um, this term here. Okay, cool. So now we've got for this one single training pair, center word, context word, we've got the term in the last function for that one pair. And what we now need to do is, for instance, we need to get the partial derivatives of um, the last function for this for this one pair with respect to the v vector. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to follow gradient descent by updating this v vector using the current value of the v vector minus the learning rate times the partial derivatives of this. Now, it's important to just think a little bit, what does this mean? This is actually a vector, right? Because there's a bunch of elements in the VC vector and you're taking the partial derivatives of the loss with respect to each of the individual vectors in the VC vector. So this whole thing is also a vector. Okay, you need it to be a vector because you're subtracting it from a vector. Okay, so this whole thing is also a vector. And this means that you need to know something about matrix and vector um, derivatives in order to figure out what that is. Fortunately for you, there's a whole um, video on matrix and vector derivatives. So you can go and um, watch that and make sure that you understand what it actually means if you write this down. Um, if you've never seen this before, I really encourage you to go and look at that video. But if you know all of that and you're equipped with Wikipedia, which will give you all the identities that you need, and those identities look very similar to the scalar cases, then you can actually figure out, well, if this is my loss function and I take the partial derivatives of this thing with respect to VC, then I end up with this equation. Okay. And you can already see like the partial derivative of this thing with respect to VC, it turns out that that's just U0. And then um, the log of this monstrosity, you need a little bit of a chain rule there. You need to go through the steps and it turns out to be this monstrosity here. Now, the cool thing about this monstrosity here is that this is just, um, that's just the structure of our model again. This is just the softmax. So you can write that out a little bit more concisely. So it turns out that the partial derivatives is the sum over my vocabulary. And what I'm doing is I'm multiplying for each of the words in my vocabulary, J, I'm multiplying the probability of that word occurring with this particular context word times the context word embedding for that particular word. And I'm summing all of those up. Okay. And I'm moving VC in the direction of um, minus eta times minus the context word that I'm seeing with at the moment plus, and then you've got um, this term here, which is like a weighted sum of all the other context word embeddings. The important thing is this is actually quite easy to implement in Python, right? This is like one line of, of no, okay, maybe three lines of code in order to move in a particular direction according to the derivatives. You can, uh, we also need something else, right? We also need to know the partial derivatives for the U vectors since we want to move the context vectors as well in order to minimize our loss function. And to do that, you can go through very similar steps and you can also derive uh, an expression like this for the partial derivatives of our context word vectors. Um, similar steps, um, you end up with similar equations. Really neat, okay? And if you, if you have these expressions, then you can actually train your skipgram word to vec model um, and you can do it without relying on a neural network package because you can just calculate these derivatives by hand.